Cartoons as a child. Now, I believe for some generations you had Muffin the Mule. Is this correct? And I'm sure if you didn't have cartoons that you watched as, or listened to on the radio, as your children grew up, you may have watched cartoons with, those, with them on the TV, or grandchildren, nephews, nieces. There's a particular one that I used to watch with my nephew, Chad, Bob the Builder. Everybody knows Bob the Builder, I presume. Bob the Builder got to number one in the charts. And what did Bob the Builder used to say? Can he fix it? Yes, he can. I like Bob the Builder. <laughs> it's simple, simple little way to approach life, isn't it? Can we do it? Yes, we can. I like Bob for his confidence. And indeed, we have, since we last met, my friends, we have a new Prime Minister. Yes, not Bob the Builder. <laughs> it's Boris the Johnson. <laughs> but very similar approach, shall we say. In as much as, like him or not, he did come out with some optimism. He came out with a bit of confidence, which I liked, I must admit. Whether you believe in his policies that followed, we won't go into that. But he came out with some optimism, having had what seems like an eternity of grey. No, we can't. We can't do this and we can't do that and we can't do the other. It seemed to be very grey world all of a sudden. But then all of a sudden, Boris bounced in like Tigger off, whatever Tigger bounces from. And then he came, yes, we can and we'll do this and we'll do that and we'll do the other. And again, as I say, it's not based on politics or any policy basis. I just like optimism. It's the yes, we can attitude. It is confidence, and more so, trust, and there's some hope. Where others will say, no, we can't, him and others will say, yes, we can. And from our first reading this evening, which, according to Matthew Henry's commentary, is David has wrote this psalm at a, type, a time of possible persecution. He's, per, he's been persecuted by King Saul. Now we know Saul was tracing after David because God had superseded him really. Saul was no longer the main man. David was to be the anointed one. He was. And Saul persecuted him and followed him. Hunted him down. He had narrow escapes along the way, David. Narrow escape of Kilar, I hope I spelled, uh, pronounced it correctly. Within the wilderness of Zippar and Maon, where David is on the one side of the mountain and Saul is on another. In the cave in Engadi. But each of these times, the Lord provided for David. He offered him what he required. He provided him with protection when he needed it. David even went into the camp and stood next to Saul. But he didn't kill Saul. He told his men no. He would put his trust in God to deal with Saul as he felt necessary, as he felt it required. Now Spurgeon, Charles Haddon Spurgeon who I'm a big fan of, you know. He wrote some wonderful books called The Treasury of David, Commentaries on the Psalms. Now, he slightly differs from, from Matthew Henry in as much as he says that, so, that, my apologies, David probably wrote this at the time that Absalom rebelled. Absalom, the son of David. He felt that this was the time that these, uh, this psalm was wrote. Now let's just put ourselves in David's shoes just for a second, if that was the case. Here is his son, Absalom, turning against him, rebelling against him, wanting to take his father's place. 
How would we feel if family were to turn against us? Sons or daughters, husbands, wives, brothers, sisters. If they were to turn against us, the people we feel closest to. The people in whom we feel we can place our wholehearted trust, family, close friends. But this is what David faced. Absalom, his son, was turning against him, rebelling against him. Who could David trust if his own family turned against him? Well, in Psalm 31, particularly, he says, In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. When he possibly felt there was no one else he could turn to, even as king, in you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Now, trust. It's one of those things, isn't it? Do we give it or don't we give it? Who do we trust with our trust? If I can put it that way. But what is it? It's a firm belief in reliability. We can rely upon this person. We can rely on this thing. We can put our trust in it. It's a truth. We have trust in someone if we can believe them. If we can believe what they are saying. It's also solid. And it's secure. Now we can put our trust in things that may not necessarily be secure. Have anybody ever gone along a rope bridge? I've tried one of those. Have you done one here? Oh. You trust in them, but <laughs> you stand on them and you wobble about, don't you? And so your trust is a little bit dubious to say the least. You're there going, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm sure I'm okay. But it does wobble about a bit, doesn't it? There's nothing more trustworthy than something solid. That we can put our foot on and know we're not going to move. And David says this further in the psalm, doesn't he? He says, he sees God as his rock and as his fortress. He goes further in this, in this psalm. He says, you are my rock and you are my fortress. He feels he can place security in God. He can put his foot there and God will hold him. If he needs him, he's a fortress. And God will protect him as he had done from Saul. He put his trust in the Lord. And further to that, why? Why would you put trust in the Lord as well? When he's had experience of, the, of God's faithfulness to him. Let us not forget it was indeed David who fought Goliath. Young David. Stepping up as a young, young boy. Fighting this seven foot, we believe. Gigantic Goliath. He placed his trust in God. He said, I can do this. And he went out, and as we know, with his sling, defeated Goliath. The trust was not in himself. David did not put the trust in himself. Importantly, he put his trust in God. In you, our Lord, I put my trust. Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah had said, in chapter 17, 5 to 8. Very relevant to, to tonight's sermon, actually. Inasmuch as David had not placed his faith in man, he placed it in God. Jer Jeremiah said, by the words of God, Cursed is the man that trusteth in man. Cursed is the man who trusteth in man. He goes on to say that it would be like a pile, like a, within the desert, in the parched land, to put trust in man with us. Now we can. We have friends and family. And we may ask them for a favour now and again. Or they may ask us. But we are but human beings. And we can't help with everything. We may be asked to give a, a mighty donation to something. We just don't have it. We might be able to uh, ask to fix a car. And we don't have the skills to do it. So in some way man, human being, we can't do everything. And we wither away a bit.
But through Jeremiah, God also said, Blessed is the man who trusteth in the Lord. He goes on to say, The man who trusteth in the Lord is like a, like a tree that's beside a river, and its roots reach into the water. It will never be damaged by a drought. Its leaves will forever be green. Why? Because the Lord sustains. The Lord will sustain us when we trust in him. And where does this trust come from? Well, there is a second part to what Jeremiah said. He said, blessed is the man who trusteth in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. Where does our trust come from, uh, from my friends? It comes from our hope. As it states in the Bible, it's stated as LPS. LPS. Nice little Greek word there. Take something out with you tonight. It's a little Greek word. LPS stands for hope. Hope. Which is one of the three great pillars of Christianity. Hope, faith and love. It's where we have our second reading this evening. In Paul, in his letter to the Romans, speaks to them. Of these matters. He says, when you listen to it, it almost as if he's singing with joy in his confidence to it. He says it with such confidence. Now that we have been put right with God through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus. He speaks there of hope. Hope shows itself to us in many ways. We have hope in the resurrection. We have hope in heaven to come. We have hope in salvation. And we have hope in justification, otherwise known as the relationship with God. And this is what Paul spoke of. He has brought us by faith into this experience of, of God's grace in which we now live. So we boast of the hope we have of sharing God's glory. The justification by our faith. We believe in Christ. We believe in the Lord. We believe that he took his place upon the cross for us. By his, by his death for us, we were justified. We were brought into a relationship with Christ. Could we do it, my friends? Could we put ourselves in somebody else's place? Just to bring them into a relationship with somebody else. Yesterday I went with my... Well, I went to watch my nephew. My nephew, the trumpet player. You all know, you've seen him. But he's out marching in his band yesterday. It was a little march, but it was a march all the same. And it was a lovely day. It was a 1940s day at Wensfield High. To commemorate the decade and also the military aspect that took place. And there was a selection of military cars there. Oh, it was fascinating. But more importantly to me, and I didn't know it was going to happen, there was a gentleman there, aged 96 years of age. Never met him before in my life, but he was clad in his army uniform. And he had served in five places during the Second World War. His name was Arthur. I run Arthur, his name was Arthur. <laughs> and uh, what a fascinating gentleman he was. And in all honesty, it's the first veteran I believe I've ever met. My grandfather was killed in the war. My grandfather, the other one, passed away before I had the chance to speak to him. And the first thing I said to Arthur was, thank you. I felt it was just natural to say to Arthur, thank you for what you did. You put your life on the line for us. And he was a lovely gentleman. I had a photo. If you want to see the photo later, I've got it on me. <laughs> A lovely gentleman. But I had to say thank you. The first thing I said, thank you, Arthur. And what for? I said, for what you did. You laid your life on the line as millions of others did. For the sake of me. For the sake of everyone here. And it humbles you to meet somebody like that. Because could I do it? I would hope I could. But the Lord did it for all of us. And by that... We, know, we knew of his resurrection. By that we have hope in heaven. 
By that he brought us into justification and into a relationship with God, which even David hadn't had. By our faith in Jesus, he brought us to God, a closer relationship. And so Paul is right, so we boast of the hope. It's right, it's joyful. We hope and we boast in that hope that we have the sharing of God's glory. The Lord opens the door to a relationship with Christ, with God. But as we heard towards the end also, it's not also what he does right now when we're feeling good. Hope is that great thing which has helped us in the time of difficulty. And indeed, like Arthur yesterday, he still carried with him the copy of the Gospel according to John which I believe that all military men have been given. Now, I have one of these. Somebody gave me a copy. It's a little brown, little brown. You wouldn't think it was anything. And he still had it. And why did he have it? He said, because he gave him hope out there to read the gospel, to hear what the Lord had said. At the time of difficulty, gave Arthur and millions of others hope. And Paul had said it. He says it to us. In times of difficulty... We will have perseverance, which is led to endurance, which is given to us by hope. When we believe in the Lord and we have hope in our future, and it's not one of those shaky bridges, or we hope it happens, it's the blessed assurance that we've sang of. It's the hope that it will, there is a future, that the Lord is always with us. It's as Paul said. It's a hope in the everlasting love of God which he pours into our hearts and provides us with that stability to believe for the future. My friends, in conclusion, by hope we have trust. And the same token, in trust we have hope. So as Bob would say, whenever we have doubt, in you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Can God fix it? Yes, he can. God bless you, and amen.